Hey everybody, uh, it's been a while. Uh, Corey here from the Cracktastic Plastic Podcast, and uh, I say it's been a while, but if this is your first time on the channel and you're just going through all these videos, then it, maybe it's only been a few minutes. <sighs> Who cares? Why am I waffling? So, um, I have the camera at completely the wrong angle today, but I have on my bench some custom work I've been doing that I thought I would uh, show off a little bit and talk about the process. Um, so first of all, I'll get right to it. So here is an original vamp, but I added stinger doors and roof. Um, and I also stuck it on a vamp 2 base because that base was nicer than my vamp 1 base that this was on. And I, uh, I think it looks cooler with the lighter wheels. Anyway, and it's my stuff, so... I'll give her with you, whatever, whatever, all right, um, so yeah, there's the vamp too, this is, or the, the, the original vamp, this is my, my take on, uh, kind of a night force version, the colors are obviously not black and not bright red, um, and I didn't paint, I only painted the tips of the missiles because it's just going to be displayed, um, but, uh, yeah, you can see it's a snow cat, uh, no cat missile box, um, and it looks way cooler from like this angle. Um, you can see that the seats are red. You probably can't tell that the uh, the tip of the gear sh the, the gear shift is also that red dark red color, um, and yeah, I'm going to show you the colors I used. Um, and I'm going to show you my process, or I'm going to talk about my, my process. Um, this one, obviously, original Havoc in original colors. And, and this is the this is the custom jobby. I'm going to pop this up here. You can see I did a little bit of stuff with the, eh, with the innards of it with some color in there and um did the tracks did the hovercraft it's a different color that was the easy part um got some silver accents on the vents in here and the engine cover uh, all in all this turned out pretty awesome. I'm really super happy with the way that this turned out. Um, and I think it looks cool as shit. And then here's, uh, I have, uh, I have a, a, a tiger cat that was beat to absolute shit. Like everything's, I mean, one of the, one of the, uh, pegs for the wheels broken off so I had to thread that and actually screw the wheel onto it and it worked out pretty well. The same repair I did for my uh, uh, for my uh, mean dog that I have in another video. Um, but this is this is this will be the driver for him. I've got I've got Frostbite's head on low lights body so he looks kind of night forcey and it'll look cool. It looks really good with the colors. Like it's a nice contrast. I think it looks pretty cool. Um, yeah. So painting these vehicles, um, I got a specific question from. Mm, Gabriel Hernandez on Facebook. I don't remember which group it was in. I whore myself out on all the GI Joe groups. Um, but he just asked me what spray paint and primer what did you do and he said that he has had not great results so I'm gonna talk about my process and my experience and hopefully I'm sure there are people out there in the groups and watching these videos that do this way better than I do but this is my process my background is that uh, um, for many many years I have been doing like 
auto, more automotive um, and motorcycle type stuff. I have a friend named Russell Borgmanario. And he and I, for a while, we built custom motorcycles. I still have a couple of them in my garage. Um, and so most of my most of my getting my hands dirty and learning how to do this stuff was on was was with that. Um, if you're interested in that sort of thing, you can check out our our Facebook page, and I will put a link or a description or whatever in the comments. It's called Rusty Fish Hook Customs. Um, he has since moved away, so we're not able to do that anymore. But um, the experience from doing that sort of thing has, and from painting cars and and all sorts of other things for. 20 years now, um, has, uh, I, I've, I've gained some knowledge and some, some processes in that. So, first of all, um, specifically for this stuff, um, to get good results with this, you can see it's got a nice shine to it, and it's nice and even, and there's no runs in the paint or anything and so basically first and foremost is primer now this is black primer i also have um lighter colors and the reason for that is if you put down the the the, the color of the primer that you put down will determine the color of the paint um a, a black primer is going to make this color end up darker so as you can see like on the missiles on this um, I don't know if you can see in this light. Let me change the temperature of the light here. All that does, did, did, all, all that does is hurt my eyes. Um, hold on. Oh, there we go. There we go. That's the temperature, not the brightness. Um, so you can see that this is darker than this. It's because on these I didn't actually prime them at all. So this is the original orange, and I just put a couple of coats of the red on here. With this, I primed these black first because I wanted these to be darker. And I wanted the missiles and guns to be a little bit lighter. So this is all black. Um, I didn't prime the hovercraft. Um, you can see that it's a little bit lighter than than the, the track covers and the engine cover and these guys. And Anyway, um, so yeah, a, the color of the primer is going to determine the, the final color of your paint. Um, as far as getting it to lay down well... Um, the best thing that you can do is to heat the paint first. Um, all I do is just run the can under hot water and I shake it while I'm running it under hot water. I, basically, I hold the can like this and I just shake it like this while hot water is running over this part of it. So that heats the metal, which then heats the paint. And that helps with the, with the disbursement of the paint. So when it comes out, it, it makes a much finer mist and it lays down a lot more evenly. Um, Next is light coats. Um, so your first coat of primer should be very light. Um, it shouldn't even have full coverage. It should just basically be a dusting. And all what that does is it lays down it lays down a very thin layer of sticky residue, basically that gives the primer something to bond to. So when you put down your second coat your actual coverage coat and uh, and I usually do I usually do a, 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 an initial very light coat and then I'll do two not quite as light coats to get full coverage um, but basically laying down the the initial coat very very light allows a sticky surface for the next couple of coats to adhere to properly and um, I completely lost my train of thought. Oh, so, and you want to wait, like, you want, you, depending on the temperature and the humidity, if it's super humid outside, you might have to wait a few minutes longer. If the air is pretty dry, it's pretty quick. Um, this stuff, it's, uh, it's, um, maybe 15 minutes between coats is, is how long I wait. Um, it doesn't have to be longer than that. In fact, if you wait too much longer than that, if you wait too long, then the tackiness isn't there. It'll flash too quickly, and it'll cure. It'll cure too much, and then it won't lay down as evenly. Because when the when the when the primer and the paint is still in that sort of 
dry but tacky state when you when you lay down the next coat it bonds to it and it it flows into it and it blends well um so yeah the initial thing is to heat the paint it doesn't have to be like piping hot just warm like more than room temperature like you know just just warm it just thins it out and helps it lay down a little better um next is what i was talking about as is, is the time between coats um that's pretty important uh, about 15 minutes, and that, that, that's across the board for the primer and the base and the clear. Um, I usually do, like, one to two coats of primer, depending on how much coverage I want and how much detail. Um, like with this, I only did one coat of, of primer on this, um, because I just... Well, after my initial my initial coat to get it tacky, um, and then the same applies when it's time for the the base colors is um, is uh, a very light coat, just a very light um, even. You don't you don't want full coverage because if you get too much paint on, then it gets too thick, and if you lay down too thick of an initial coat, that's when the running starts to happen because. Gravity has a, an effect on this stuff, even though it's, you know, sticky and, and liquid. And that's why you get paint runs, is it's just too thick. And that should be obvious, and it probably is, and I probably don't really need to explain that, but I am anyway. Um, uh, and then clear coat, yeah, I usually, with, with this, with the base coat, it's always one, uh, it's always, it's always like, three coats of the base coat but very thin until you get good coverage and then two coats of this you don't want to overdo it on the clear because it'll get it'll get pretty thick um but uh this is all just rust-oleum stuff um and then krylon um and then the other thing to um keep in mind is that uh you want to make sure that the paint that you're using is compatible with the surface that you're spraying um so anything that says like this it says it says uh, oh right there any surface um this one says specifically bonds to plastic um this this ace stuff it doesn't say anything about what surface it bonds to but i i know what it bonds to because i've used it before and it's just it's you know gloss enamel um, uh, yeah, once you get the primer on, it's actually not that, Im it's not as important, but if you have, like, okay, for instance, um, like, if you go to AutoZone or O'Reilly or whatever your auto parts store and you buy the color match stuff, um, like the short cans that are, that are the same paint coat as your, as your car, um, they have a huge variety of colors, and those paints look great, but they don't lay down well on plastic, um, especially if it's not primed properly. When when you do try to paint plastic with them, it turns out like super, super hazy. So that's a case where more expensive paint does not necessarily equal better job. Um, so yeah, just like, don't buy the cheap stuff. Don't buy whatever, like... Um, Sam's Club or whatever, three dollars a can because that stuff is crap and it's just not going to lay down well. It's already coagulating inside the can. It's just it's junk. Um, that stuff is for I don't know spray painting the the clothesline pole in your backyard and shit like that. Um, I think. I mean that's that's it as far as the actual painting, you know. I mean everything else, you know, hold the hold the spray the spray can at about six inches away from the surface you're painting, like six to eight inches. Eight inches is probably too much. Four to six inches, but the closer you get, the heavier it's going to lay down. So you don't want to get too close. So six inches is like a good a a good uh, distance. Um, left to right, you know, pass, pass, pass for a coat. Um, could you see that? I don't know if you could see that. Um, as far as the tools go, there aren't any real 
there's nothing like real super specific to this um like there's nothing like i don't know it's just masking tape like i have the sanding block um i use this on like the really flat surfaces it's uh it's a uh, it's foam um i don't remember what grit it is um it was definitely a much rougher grit when it was new and after i had spent i mean this thing is very it's, it's like several years old but it's been used so much that the the sanding surface on it is like is super super dulled down now so it's perfect for this kind of stuff um but it's foam so it contours to things and gets into little crevices and stuff um fine line tape this stuff uh is not cheap it's like this roll is about 15 or 18 bucks um Normally I use thinner stuff than this. This is like three eighths, I think, and usually I use quarter inch. Um, I don't know. This might be half. Usually I use I use uh, I usually use quarter inch, um, but because it's it's got flex to it. But I didn't have any on hand when I did this. But this stuff is it's not paper. It's like a it's like a vinyl. Um, and there's no way you're going to be able to see on this camera, but it's, 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 it's vinyl. It's kind of, uh, yeah, it's like a woven material. It's not even vinyl. I don't know what, I don't know what material it is, but it's, uh, anyway, um, the edges of this stuff, it, it adheres really, really well. And it makes like nice, perfect lines so that you don't have like with regular masking tape, paint will get underneath this and that doesn't happen with the fine line tape. So. Um, yeah, for this, I just, I used this stuff, and then for smaller spots, you know, just blue painter's tape is all I use. Um, I'm pretty anal about, um, about edges, so I always, I, I'd never rip my tape, I always cut it off with scissors, um, and a sharp blade, I use this because I keep forgetting to dig my exactos out of the drawer, but, um, like the most detail I did on this, you can see, like, I did the dash, and you can see in here that, like, this is, it's painted on top and not inside, um, and, um, yeah, the seats, the seats are done in, in that red color, and that's all, like, that's all done with the fine line tape, and then mask, um, Gabe and anybody else, I hope that that was helpful. Um, I feel like this video is not nearly as entertaining as most of my other videos because I'm hilarious. Um, and it's a little more long-winded than the they generally tend to be because this one's pushing 18 minutes, 19 minutes. Uh, so I'm going to stop now. If you have any more questions, ask them and I will do my best to answer um, and as far as this stuff goes, I actually know my shit pretty well, so I probably will be able to answer most of the questions that you have that I didn't cover, um, but I hope that this helps with, uh, as far as technique, like, the biggest one, the one I can't stress enough is to warm the paint up, um, because it really does flow and bond a lot better when the paint is warm. So, anyway, as per usual, um... Like this YouTube channel, subscribe to this YouTube channel, check us out on cracktasticplastic.com. Um, you can that hosts everything: our Facebook page, our Facebook group, uh, Patreon, Instagram, Twitter, all that stuff. You can find at cracktasticplastic.com. So, um, that's. Oh man, you can really see this ring light in my glasses. That's creepy. I'm gonna go down somewhere around here. Uh, uh, yeah, that's it. That's all I got. Uh, Gabe, I hope I answered your questions and anybody else who's interested in this. Uh, yeah, over and out. <laughs>